One of the great things about deer hunting and the passage of time is that if you pay attention long enough, you can start putting a bunch of different experiences together and see the developing patterns that deer use almost all the time. Deer are creatures of habit. They spend most of their lives bedded down in secure places for their protection and safety and survival, and the rest of it feeding so that they can actually stay alive. Unlike us, deer don't have the luxury to be entertained or to do things that they enjoy doing for the most part. They are in survival mode all of the time. One of the things that I noticed real recently is I started putting together a number of places where I've seen some big bucks. And I noticed that there was a particular formation, topographically speaking, that existed for all of these bucks. I showed these formations topographically speaking, to a number of people with geological backgrounds. These are people who either majored in it or maybe they make their living in geology and they understand topo maps and topography much better than most of us. And it was interesting because there was a lot of discrepancy between these folks as to what this land feature actually was. Let me put it on a map for you and show you what I mean. This is what I've begun to call Bowtie Ridge Terrain. And it actually seems together a couple of important features, topographically speaking, that deer, and especially big bucks, really seek out. You'll notice on the edges of this map, on the left and right, that there are spurs, traditional spurs, that jut out from the ridge, the main ridge that exists here. And right smack dab in the middle between those two is a stream. And that creates that draw or valley. What makes this bow tie feature somewhat unique though, is that at the top of the stream, there is a split in the stream where there are a couple of braids, usually two. And these two braids will form two separate draws. And the result is this bow tie effect. You have these points or spurs that project on the sides. Those in and of themselves are powerful deer attractants. And then you have in the center a series of draws. And in between those two stream braids is usually a fairly flat section, a bench in most cases, that deer will pile up in. If you find this topo feature just about anywhere it's found, unless it's in the middle of a blacktop parking lot at a Walmart, you're going to find an inordinate amount of deer sign. That's because deer feel really protected in these areas, and there's a number of reasons why they gravitate to these locations. Recently, I had the opportunity to visit about 12 of these particular locations, and they encompass a whole variety of terrains. So let me give you five reasons on why deer end up in these locations. And then I'll give you three ways to go about hunting these specific bow tie formations. First, when it comes to deer survival, nothing trumps security. And a deer's nose is its best friend when it comes to surviving predators, both hunters and wild critters. These bowtie locations maximize the effect that the wind and thermals have to protect a deer. If you go into the actual formation itself, there's a pretty good chance in enough time that a deer in almost any spot in that formation will be able to detect your scent because of the wind and thermal action. This makes these areas really difficult to hunt. It also makes it difficult for things like coyotes and black bears and other predators to approach deer without them knowing they're in the area. And that's why they seek out these locations. Let me show you a couple of ways in which they maximize these bow tie locations and the thermal and wind effect to protect themselves. So let's say there's a west wind about eight miles per hour it's straight out of the west blowing across this land formation. This is the bow tie right here. You've got a spur on each side. You've got a draw where the creek goes through and this is one of the specialized locations that makes this a bow tie because it has two feeder streams that form many draws. 
up here is the bench and if you actually go north on this map what's not seen that's the main ridge that runs east to west remember this is a feeder stream that's going down into the main stream so as the wind blows from west to east on this landscape in this wooded environment it's going to encounter this draw here and the winds alone are going to do a lot of swirling in this location so if we discount thermals even for a couple of seconds here the best bedding based on a west wind to be in this location or at least in the vicinity and over here on this other spur it would be along here and up here on the bench it's going to be in this area right here of course some of the best bedding is actually off the map in the very flat section of the bench up here if you ever find a rock outcropping or mountain laurel a thicket of mountain laurel or rhododendron those can really be good buck bedding spots. Of course, does can pile up pretty much anywhere in this formation because they almost always bed in groups and they turn themselves in different directions so they can not only smell but see any predator that's entering this bow tie. These spots are phenomenal the way that they are, but with the thermal effect that takes place makes this spot a world-class deer bedding location. So remember the principle of thermals. If you're new to them, here's what you need to know about them. Hot air rises, cold air sinks. So in the morning when the sun comes up, depending on the location, there's a lot of factors. The air and especially the ground is going to warm up. And when that warming takes effect, it causes the air to warm up around it warm air particles that are rising mean that colder air particles have to drop and this causes a swirling effect the exact opposite takes place at sunset where you have a cooling effect and the thermals start dropping this pulls your scent downward down a hillside instead of going up as it is during the day and so the thermals in this location let's first look at the thermals on these spurs they're going to pull uphill all day long like this and that's because you're going from the draw up to the spur and over here on this spur we've got the same thing taking place and so you've got the wind blowing in these blue spots that I marked, you got the wind blowing over the back of a, a big buck, for instance, and you've got the thermals hitting it in the face, which means if you come in from the bottom here, he's going to smell you. And if you come in from the top here, he's going to smell you. It's just one way or the other with the wind or the thermals. Then add to the fact that you also have the thermal pool going up this valley because hot air rises during the day it's going to go up this valley and this draw same thing it's going to go all the way up until it runs out of elevation same way over here and you're going to have these thermals pooling up these ridge lines here And you can see immediately why this is such a good location. You're also going to have this thermal pull up onto the bench. It won't be usually as strong because the elevation change is not as drastic, but you're still going to get an accumulation of scent. And so you can actually be down here, let's say in this spot, and the wind's blowing across from west to east, and a buck up here eventually very well may get to smell your scent because of the thermal pool. That is the power of thermals. And that's what makes these locations magnets for deer to feel secure. So there's a bed right here. And behind it is just this little barrier of trees. And if you turn around here and look down the hill you're not going to sneak up on this buck. Another reason why these bow tie areas 
have a lot of deer in them is because they can be used on literally any wind. The deer just have to shuffle themselves around within the formation, the topographical formation, to be able to stay in that same, in some cases, just a couple of acres. In other cases, these may encompass 100 acres or more. And so any wind, literally, they are okay in that location. They don't have to go off to another place. Whenever a deer travels, it inherently risks being predated. And so you have to think about if they can find a spot where they feel secure and they only have to move slightly, it's a much more attractive area for them than one where they've got to travel long distances to get from one place to another because the wind has shifted. This can be illustrated by me sharing a topo map of an area that I actually went to and observed these bow tie formations being used by deer. So we could spend a lot of time going over the different places that bucks and any deer for that matter could bed based upon different winds. Rather than clutter up a map and take up a bunch of time, I'm just going to use one particular bed and show how it would move over time perhaps based on a different wind. How one buck can rotate within this formation to find a place that's secure. So the first location and the first wind is the west wind. That's pretty predominant in a lot of places. And oftentimes you'll find them either here, right on the edge of, you can see that the terrain goes really steep here and drops off. And here it's not nearly as steep. So they'll either be bedded there or perhaps just slightly above that. Those two spots, somewhere in that range, that's where I would expect a buck to be on a west wind. If everything else is equal, if there's a spot in here where there's a blowdown or perhaps thick vegetation, that's where I would expect a buck to be. On a south wind, I would expect this buck to either move to one of two spots. Perhaps over in here, because... He's protected from the direct wind, but still gets the wind effect here. Plus the thermals are constantly pulling in here. Or a lot of times he'll just move up the point slightly. And with the wind coming out of the south, a lot of times on topo maps, you don't see the slight nuances, many spurs or points that actually come off of the main point. And so all it takes is about 10 or even 15 feet to protect that deer from the direct wind, but still to get the wind and thermal effect. So on a south wind, I would expect a buck to just bump up the spur to take in the benefit of the wind and thermals. Of course, on an east wind, you're going to see the exact opposite. Remember, bucks, mature bucks especially, almost always bed with the wind blowing over their back when you've got terrain, elevation change, and the thermals then are rising and hitting him in the face. So he's just going to switch over to the other side of this spur, perhaps in here, or he may even drop down a little bit lower. I might mention too that no matter the wind, the area in here, in this draw, is almost always conducive to deer having the advantage because of the thermal effect. And lastly, when you've got a north wind, I would expect the deer to just bump out here on this point a little bit further. Again, the wind's blowing down across here. They're away from the direct wind, especially when it's cold out, but they still get the benefit of the scent that comes with the wind and the thermal pool that comes up from the stream valley below. It might be difficult to see this because of the angles, but you'll see that there's a variety of levels of steepness to the terrain. It's almost like mini benches that are created in these bow ties. And you'll have to scout them specific to where you're at to find out where the does and the bucks are hanging out, if there are specific beds or bedding areas. It's hard to tell, but just beyond this opening here, the terrain goes up quite steep. In fact, there's almost like a rock outcropping with a cliff right in there. A lot of times you'll find deer up on the top of these little outcroppings looking down over the valley below them. 
So I'm going to switch maps here to illustrate some of the bedding that takes place in these benches. Sometimes these benches are actually points that project out. It all depends on how wide the two little feeder branches are. Depends upon the terrain. A lot of different factors play into it. But what you really want to look for is where are the nuances in elevation? So right in here, you can see this. This spot right here acts as a little mini bench. And you'll see that deer will pile up on the front end of that and sometimes on the back end of that. Depends on the situation. In a lot of ways, it doesn't matter what the wind is because the wind and the thermals are always going to be pulling into this section. A deer may ultimately change the direction in which it faces when it's bedding, but most of this area here is going to have a lot of deer in it no matter what the wind is. So again, going into that spot, figuring things out is the most important step because every single one of these bow ties is different. By the way, I want to mention that if you're still struggling to identify these bow tie ridge locations on a topo map, let me give you something that kind of tipped me off when I first discovered this. Most contour lines, at least in the eastern part of the United States, are rounded like this. And that's because erosion over time has worn down our mountain ranges and specific ridges. When you come to a bow tie location, notice how most of this area here has much sharper lines, almost like it has corners. A lot of times the bow ties are so exact and that's because the streams run down along here. That's one of the feeders and over here is one of the feeders and they create these almost 90 degree angles in the contour lines. So you're really looking for sharp contour lines instead of the rounded ones. When you see that, you stop and look, a lot of times you're going to notice that's a headwaters of a stream and there's a bow tie there. A third reason that you'll find a lot of deer in these bow ties is because the ease of movement relative to the rest of the terrain around it makes it such that it's attractive to deer. Of course, this is true anytime you have a stream that cuts through and creates a draw, and then you have spurs on either side. Deer are not going to take the steepest path. They usually find a place where there is much easier access. But this formation, the bow tie formation, actually magnifies the ability for a deer to cross over multiple locations, to rise up from the mainstream perhaps, and the valley that's found there and get up to the top of the ridge area which oftentimes is a place where they like to travel. So you'll see that these areas, these bow tie areas, have lots of trails in them because they're easy to navigate for deer. Is that deer I just jumped? This bed's right in here. See it? And this is some spice bush that it's bedded underneath, which is a understory shrub. I'm gonna show you what he can see from his bed. showed up better in the video but he's really got a great view down across this stream valley here a beautiful little draw and the wind blowing over his back he's hard to sneak up on I got about 40 yards away from him but I was walking really slow when it comes to trails one of the reasons why deer are in these bow ties is because the ease of navigation. Deer almost always travel the path of least resistance. So they'll usually have a path that goes all the way down from the stream valley below, the main stream that's not shown on this map. And it will come up here, usually skirt around the main top of the ridge. 
and come up here. Then there will be another one on the other side over here. Usually these will stay pretty close to the center because remember the deer are bedding out here a little bit farther out on the points. And so they usually don't set up right where the trails go through. Same is true over here on the other side, again coming up from the main stream. And this area here, over here, is much flatter than most of these spurs that come out in bowtie formations. And so you don't typically see that, but sometimes you do. Every one of these is unique. And so in that case, you might expect to see a trail that'll go around the top of this little point, and then you'll have one that'll come up along here, around the side of the ridge. And then you'll notice that deer will cross really close to the headwaters. And that's because the formation there is not as steep and it's easier for them to go a little bit farther upstream than to cross down here where you can see there's quite a bit of elevation change in a short period of time. There are all kinds of trails in these benches but there's almost always one right through the heart of it and it'll cross over where there's another really easy spot to cross this feeder stream. Again remember these streams these little feeders are often very very narrow a foot or two wide or they may not even have water in them depending upon the time of the year and then it usually hooks up to this main trail and then there are usually some trails that go up to the main ridge which remember is off the map here and it would be north of this location you're also going to see that there are almost always trails that follow these feeder streams and there'll be ones that go all the way down to the main stream down in the valley and this is true usually on both sides of the feeders. And then of course these will also go right up to the top of the ridge. One of the challenges that you face in hunting these bow ties is there are so many deer and especially so many paths that they can use that oftentimes if you can find a spot where there's not very much movement, you don't see a lot of trails, that may be a good spot for you to look about to set up either on the ground or up on a tree stand because it's such a premium to be able to find a spot where your scent isn't going to blow right into one of the main paths. So scout that out. That's one of the things that you want to look at when you're going into these bow ties in late winter, early spring, or at the very latest, I would say early summer. So just about everybody can find deer trails without any problem. But when you want to look for big buck beds, especially, you want to notice just the little minutia trails that veer off. I'll show you one right here. Now there's this little old forest trail here. And right here, up this steep embankment, is not much of a trail. You can see that it's really hard to follow, but I would scout this area above it extensively because I just about guarantee there's a big buck bed in here somewhere. Doesn't get much fresher than that. I'd say that's this morning. And when I look around, there's droppings everywhere. I'm getting close. <laughs> 